North Korea says it's suspending all of its nuclear and long range missile tests. The regime has used missile tests for decades as a show of force to the rest of the world. The move comes ahead of Kim Jong Un's landmark meeting with South Korean President Moon Jae in next week. Kim and President Trump are also prepared to meet sometime in the coming months. And joining me now to discuss what could happen next is Gordon Chang, author of Nuclear Showdown. North Korea takes on the world. Gordon, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you. All right, so the first question for you, North Korea stopped short of suggesting intentions to give up their nuclear arsenal. What does it show about their level of commitment to these talks? Well, what they're doing is making a concession before the talks. And also, I think what Kim is doing is he's playing to the audience in South Korea. We've got to remember that a core goal or the core goal of the Kim family is to absorb the South. And what they're trying to do is to create the conditions where Moon Jae-in, the South Korean president, can come to terms with North Korea. Moon is, is somewhat pro-North Korean himself. And so I think that essentially what's happening right now is you're seeing Kim really with an eye more on South Korea than an eye on the meeting with Trump. Although, of course, both are important for him. So let's talk about what is Kim Jong-un looking to gain from his talks with the South Korea and the United States? Well, the most important thing in the talks with the U.S. would be sanctions relief. There are reports that at this moment, uh, the flow of money into Pyongyang has been severely restricted by both U.N. and U.S. sanctions. So, for instance, the Chinese are saying that Office Number 39, which is the Kim family slush fund, is running low on cash. And the South Koreans are actually saying that North Korea could run out of foreign exchange reserves by October. I don't know if the situation is that dire, but nonetheless, Kim needs money. And the way to get that would be to talk to uh, President Moon of South Korea, but more important, to talk to President Trump. So what commitments do South Korea and the U.S. hope to gain from North Korea? Well, the most important thing from our perspective is disarming North Korea, getting rid of its nukes and also of its intercontinental ballistic missiles. But we've also got to make sure that we protect our ally, Japan. And Japan is threatened by North Korea's short and intermediate range missiles. Also, the Japanese have another issue, and that is the abduction of Japanese nationals, some of whom may still be held by Pyongyang, and the Japanese want them returned and certainly want an accounting. So that's important from Jap Japan's point of view. And from South Korea, uh, Moon uh, wants to have a peace treaty ending formally the Korean War. And he also wants to have a confederation of North and South Korea. In other words, a technical unification of both halves of the peninsula in a single Korean state. And so Kim is making the conditions possible for at least those type of discussions to occur. I had a final question for you, Gordon. Is there anything that can be taken from last time that the U.S. got North Korea to sit down at the table that could be useful during these talks? Yes, in 2008, uh, Kim Jong-un's father, Kim Jong-il, actually destroyed the cooling tower for North Korea's only reactor. And there was a lot of optimism after that. That was 2008. But in the following year, Kim Jong-il walked away from the six-party denuclearization talks and, you know, that could very well be Kim Jong-un trying to take uh, that play out of his father's playbook. And we might see that again. But President Trump has a lot of power to be able to prevent Kim from doing what he wants to do. So this is going to be a test of wills between two very uh, powerful individuals, Kim Jong-un and Donald John Trump. And we'll all be watching. All right, Gordon Chang, thank you for joining us, Gordon. Thank you.